The wavetable LFO is basically just a normal LFO, except that you can exchange the LFO shape with the wavetable. So you can load in oscillator shapes to an LFO and then modulate something with it. You have here a wavetable display where you can exchange the wavetable to something. Um, I'm using here basic shapes. So we have basically here a sign at index zero and index 100, we have a square and everything in between. There's a triangle and also a saw in there and we can move between these shapes fluidly. So we can then use here the modulator output and modulate something. And when we have here the index at zero, we modulate basically with one Hertz, something with the shape of a sine wave. We have also here a mount knob where you can change the modulation amount and also some trigger modes here, um, free. So there's no reset node. So every time you press a node, you reset basically the shape and start from the beginning. Synchronized, so it's synchronized to the BPM or to the transport phase signal. Then we have groove, which is the same as sync, but here also um, the global shuffle is applied. So when you have some uh, shuffling in there, it's also applied to the LFO speed and randomized, so it's randomized on every new incoming node, which is nice. We have here a phase where we can change the position of the LFO, so we can move through the shape here uh, with the timing setting, but we also can offset this. We can start in the middle of a shape or at the beginning or at the end, right? Um, then we have the polyphonic mode, so this means basically you can press and hold multiple nodes and an LFO is applied for each node that you hold uh, individually. Then we can switch here the whole LFO to bipolar. So the modulation is basically um, ranging from zero to plus one and to minus one if this is on. And if you switch this off, it's on a unipolar, which means there are only values between zero and plus one. So this is also important to know. We have here a uh, index knob where we can move through the wave table and start at index zero have your sign and then move slowly up to 100 percent and we end up here on a different wave shape which is a, um, a square then we have of course the lfo rate where we can change here how how fast the lfo is playing back this wave shape here zero is super slow of course and 50 is uh 50 hertz <laughs> And you can also switch this to kilohertz. So now it's 50 kilohertz. So this is also possible. All the other settings here, the timing settings are basically the same as, uh, as on any LFO. So it's time synchronized to the PPM or to your project tempo or to your project uh, phase signal. And you can then say, yeah, well, I want to play back this one cycle within um, a 16 node or within one bar, or when you dial in your bar, you can say, well, I want to spread this whole cycle out to maybe three bars, right? So it takes now three bars for this whole cycle to play. So you can also apply very slow synchronized uh, time-based settings. Um, then here below, we have also some inspector settings. Um, the first one here, hold shape during cycle, is basically useful when you press multiple keys and have this here on poly mode. And you don't want to sh change the shape when you change the index, right? As long as you hold one node uh, and this is enabled, you can't change the shape until you press this node again. So while you're holding the node, you can't change the wave uh, position or the wavetable position. It only also says you only updates the LFO shape at the beginning of a new cycle. So, um, oh, it's, uh, it's, it's holding basically uh, throughout the cycle. So when the cycle still plays and you hold the node, then it doesn't change. But when the cycle is uh, finished here or at the end and starts at the beginning again, then the new setting that you dial in here with index setting is applied. Uh, and then we have don't wrap tables here. It disables wrapping the last point of each table to match the first point. It's basically when you have your different value at the end of the cycle, then at the beginning, um, the wrapping basically tries to match these points up. So uh, it's a fluid um, transfer from the end to the start. Um, 
so this is also possible to do. So I want to give you some examples here with the wavetable LFO. I'm still using here the standard four uh, or the basic shapes. So sine, tri and saw and the square. And I have here basically a phase four and this is applied. I expand here this um, module later and you can see when I press here a key, I'm modulating here basically this knob. So I want to modulate uh, oscillator R with oscillator B and I can apply the modulation here with this knob. And I want to modulate basically this amount here with the wavetable wave LFO. So now we have modulating in uh, uh, with the sign, with the basic sign. And you can change this now to a try. And then to a saw. And to a pulse. And you can fluidly move between. You can change the playback speed of the LFO. All right. Or you can go here to maybe pitch. So now when I press a key, um, the key is used to uh, change the frequency of the LFO. Um, fitting to the key you are pressing. So when I pe press C3, then it takes the frequency of C3 and plays back the LFO with that frequency. So right, um, the higher the key I choose, the faster the LFO plays accordingly to the key I'm pressing. And because this modulator is also, also polyphonic, you can use this, of course, with multiple notes. which leads to all kinds of different sounds. Um, with the setting here, pitch of current note, uh, it's also interesting that you can use this here on the phase four as a replacement oscillator. You can switch this first oscillator off here by switching this to zero and then using the modulator output uh, here for the R phase and maybe modulate it by uh, 360 degrees or maybe let's say 180. Um, and then switches it to bipolar. And now you basically hear this shape as oscillator. So now we have a sign. Maybe change the modulation amount. You can see it's wrapping here already around. So now we have a nice sign shape. Okay, so now we move on to a try. Now to a saw and a pulse. So you can use this wavetable LFO also as a replacement oscillator uh, on the phase four with this small little trick. So now that we know this, we can also use here, of course, a different wave shape. Maybe here uh, some vocals. And bring a second oscillator here in, which also plays a sign. But this time, instead of just fading it in, we modulate the first wavetable oscillator here with this. And you can then try to play around here with some different ratios, maybe half speed. Wow. So 
So not only you can modulate something something with the wavetable LFO, you can also use it as an oscillator replacement and um, yeah, do some sound design with it. You can define as many wavetable LFOs you want on any device in Bitwig Studio. Here yeah, I have just used three different LFOs with different wave shapes and modulating different things. So it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice to use. Um, Wavetable LFO is not only an LFO, it's also an oscillator if you want to on devices and can lead to nice, interesting sounds.